Hey friend, it's me again. Welcome to On Another Note Podcast, episode 14. I will be your host today. And uh, this guy, but he don't got a name yet. I'll probably have to ask my brother just because it's not even mine anyway. I just need a source of comfort. (laughs) Today I'm going rogue. Today I do not have an outline. Today it's going to be a stream of consciousness type of podcast. Well, look at me. I look ridiculous, but I like it, and that's all that matters. I haven't worn my sunglasses in a long time, and I just got back from a walk, so they just haven't came off, and I'm sticking to it. I'm also wearing one of my favorite shirts of all time. It says, I heart Winco Foods, and that's factual. I do heart Winco Foods. One of the best things about Winco is a little pizza joint they got inside. Leonardo's Pizza. Great quality pizza. And it's actually hard to find good pizza in Sacramento, to be honest with you. I really need to get my ass over to the East Coast, have some legit pizza and legit bagels. I'm not a thin crust person though. A lot of crusts are hella flimsy and that's the part I don't get. I like her kind of thick, not too thick. What's too thick for me? Little Caesars is kind of thick. I haven't had Pizza Hut in a long time, but I remember theirs was pretty thick too. A pizza I don't like is Pizza Guys. I am not a Pizza Guys person, sorry. Round table though, only because I'm used to work there. Round table pizza, I think that they have a good crust. I used to make their crust. It wasn't the best, but I got better at it. Your girl was a dough roller. I was not good at making pizzas though. Customer service, great. Customer service got me through a fire. (laughs) I couldn't tell you a crazier time than when I lived in Chico and the campfire went down. It made national news. The town of Paradise basically burned down. So that was gnarly. But I was there at the register just ready to take their orders or give them some free pizza. They needed it. But yes, making pizza was not my vibe. I admit it. And there's evidence. The manager was like, all right, guys, I'm going to have each one of you timed. Each one of you are going to get timed on how fast it takes you to make a combination pizza. And I definitely had the lowest time. On top of that, it didn't look that great either. My homegirl, though, she killed it. She, she had the fastest time and it looked incredible. Me? I needed some work, but if I were to roll some dough, I'll probably give her a run for her money. Wow. I just went off talking about pizza. I just really like pizza. Okay. But I need to have really good pizza in my life. Even round table. I like it, but it's not the best pizza I've ever had. I want to have the best pizza I've ever had and don't include deep dish in it. Too much sauce. No, thank you. Then crust. Meh. (laughs) I will find the best pizza for me. You know, it's like finding a soulmate. It takes time and I'm willing to wait. That and barbecue. You know, California, their taco game is strong. I'm blessed with a lot of tacos. Not even though, kind of. If you go to the trucks around SAC, yeah, there'll be some good tacos, some, but they're still hard to find, IMO. Tacos are okay. I've just had better tacos in different cities in California. So California tacos are great, but not in SAC. There's a few, like I mentioned, but you have to go to a truck. It's not at a restaurant. Sorry. (laughs) I'm such a critic today. (laughs) And on top of that, I'm going to add barbecue to the list. I think that there is some incredible barbecue out there. I've been to the Rip Festival in Reno. Was that where I had the best barbecue though? I don't think so. I need to get my ass over to Texas. Texas will give me the answer. I believe it. I was even watching a Joe Rogan episode today. It was his interview with Elon Musk. And man, it was kind of convincing me to take my ass over to Austin. Because one, the barbecue, like I mentioned. Two, Rogan was like, there are so many good restaurants all around Austin. It's very competitive because everybody is delicious. So I was like, dude, that's kind of enough of a motivator to get my ass over there. 
And what if I worked at Tesla? Honestly, like I haven't thought about a company that I would want to work for. But if I was to continue to be an employee, even though hopefully the day comes where I'm like my own boss, still working on it. But if I were to continue working as an employee, I want to be Elon's employee. I don't know much about him. None of us know much about him. We all got personal lives. As much as you think you know about Elon Musk, you don't. None of us do. Although I did look up a very interesting detail. At one point of the podcast, he was talking about his kids. And I was like, oh, this dude has children. Just out of curiosity, I was like, Elon has children on the search engine. And yes, he has 10. What? No. But yeah, with three different baby mamas. What? Yeah. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I thought it was interesting that his first child, his firstborn, actually didn't make it. I think that it was sudden death syndrome that he experienced. So I can only imagine how traumatic that was or is for anybody who's ever gone through it, especially as a mother. That probably hurts a lot. There are a lot of things that can break your heart, and that's one of them. I totally get that. But he seems to be very emotionally intelligent. You know, he's made it this far. For me, though, I would be just so devastated. I've never been pregnant before, nor do I anticipate to in the near future. But that's probably one of those things that, like, I'm genuinely scared of. I'm scared of just being a mother, to be honest with you. I think that I'm just worried because I want to be a good mom. Overall, I feel like if I just trust myself, have faith in myself, and have good intentions, just move appropriately, be the vibe that I am, it will all work out. I do want to become a mother. I'm just working on myself and able to become the best mother. But yes, back to Elon. He's got 10 kids. I think there are two pregnancies where he had twins and I think triplets after that, or maybe another set of twins, but they went through IVF. One of the twins actually had a gender change from male to female, and she actually changed her name because she didn't want anything to do with her father anymore. Like, what? You know, when you already lost a kid, but then another one is, like, disowning you, if your child wants nothing to do with you, dude, even that would fuck me up. I wish that the interview would have, like, went into detail about that, but it's kind of personal. And they're both men. <laughs> they're not going to get into detail about vulnerable stuff. I haven't finished the podcast yet, but I feel like Elon is just so intelligent and he's selective about what he talks about anyway. So if a topic gets brought up, he knows how to dodge it. You know, overall, smart man believes in the First Amendment. And I stand by that. Let's see. Pizza, Elon Musk. Now I'm getting hungry. I went on a walk before I started the pod. I made sure to like hurry my ass home because the sun's setting. And it's not the same when I'm trying to do this in the dark with like a shitty lamp. <laughs> on my walk, I was like, there's a poopy bag on the sidewalk. And it just kind of blows my mind because... I think that if you are a person who brings doggy poopy bags, you pick up the poop with the bag, you tie the bag, and then you toss it on the sidewalk, you don't deserve to own a dog. You should probably get one of these. You should probably get a Squishmallow. That would be a better alternative for you. But if you don't throw away those poopy bags and just leave them on the sidewalk, like what was the point of even doing it in the first place? It makes no sense. It just doesn't. Am I complaining? I'm, I feel like I'm just stating an observation that just doesn't make sense to me. You already did the hardest part. And you might as well just leave it out in the open so it can just decompose. But no, you don't want that to happen. I don't know. If there's somebody out there who does that, just explain to me your train of thought on why you just don't hold on to it and throw it away in the trash later. Do you litter? Are you a litterer? I'm curious. That's all. <laughs> Another thing that kind of rubbed me the wrong way, I've been working from home, so 
I don't really have to deal with coming across different personalities. When I was working customer service, yes. But now it's been a lot more chill. So I guess it's healthy every now and then to deal with the person. Now this person, I wish that I could have like just stood up and walked away from the situation, but I couldn't. Basically for work, I was doing some training signed up for this two-day course and the instructor was a guy that was super interesting to say the least he was a talker but you know when you're an instructor i think that's a good thing that you're a talker but the thing about him was that he talked a lot about what he was interested in it was a lot of like comic books movies pop culture and For me, I'm not into any of that stuff. I barely watch movies. But anyways, he talked about all the stuff that for me personally, I'm not interested in. So when that happens, I just mind my own business. I sit there like a good student, make sure that I'm reading what's in front of me and understanding it. So yeah, go ahead and talk about what you want to talk about, but I'm not going to participate in it. And I think that rubbed him the wrong way. Also, later in the class, I think that, like, he kind of took it personally. So we have, like, multiple tests that we had to do. We had to do a written test that was multiple choice on theory. We had a practical, which was just another test on different material. And there was one more where we went outside and then we took a test on that, on what we were supposed to do outside. Three tests. The second and the third test, though, we did it as a class. Before the third test, we had this little evaluation form that we filled out while we were outside. Two of them were completed. When we got back in the class, he was like, all right, out of those two forms, again, before the third test, out of those two forms, pick one that you feel the most confident to turn in and hand it to me when you're done. I started filling it because it was only partially complete. I got to this point where I made a mistake. So immediately, I'm really OCD because I love white out. I journal almost every day. And whenever I make a mistake, I whip out the white out. I have a legit, I love stationery. So I have a legit pen marker, pencil eraser, highlighter assortment always with me. I made a mistake on the evaluation form. And all of a sudden, this instructor was like, did you just wipe that out? Caught me off guard. It did. So I looked at him and I was like, I'll use the other one. And at the same time, this chick from across the room was like, you're not supposed to wipe anything out. You're supposed to draw a line through it and initial it. Okay, my bad. Uh, Whoa. The evaluation form police. My bad. (laughs) It was that serious. But it's not. I had another form. There were two and I had another form to work with. Okay. No big deal. But when he said that to me, did you just wipe that out? His tone of voice just definitely rubbed me the wrong way. I'm just like, why did you have to say it like that? I know that you love stand-up comedy and you're really trying to spit these jokes during your lectures and I'm not laughing at them because I'm not going to laugh at something that's not funny to me, but your vibe is just not it. Maybe I'm being sensitive. Am I being sensitive that he said it to me like that and I'm just, I'm just taking it too personally? I don't know. But I read vibes really easily and that wasn't it. So after he said that to me, I'd completely dissociated. Because after we turned in those evaluation forms, we went over the third test as a group together. There was multiple choice. And each question, somebody, whoever, just said the answer out loud. And he confirms. So we keep going through the test. It was around 30 questions. Question 26. I haven't really said much just because I didn't like the way that he talked to me. I just thought that it was disrespectful. And if we're going over it as a class, like there was no instruction to like everybody has to spit their answer. I was following along with the test and understanding why the answers were correct. But I don't have to like say it out loud. I'm still there. There's just no communication that says that I'm doing it. I guess you can just 
think that like I'm not understanding it and I'm just circling it because everybody's saying the right answers, but that's not the case. Again, like that's that's not even communicated, so it could be anything. Anyways, so question 26. He read out the question. One person was like, the answer is C. The other one was like, the answer is B. Instead of confirming their answers, he calls out my name and was like, you've been quiet. What do you think the answer is? I was like, D. I remember it was D. And he was like, D? I was like, D. <laughs> I, w- I wish I was like, did you not hear me? <laughs> But no, it takes a lot of willpower to not snap at this guy. Ugh. But anyways, I was right. And I'm not trying to flex or nothing like that. I felt like he wanted me to conform and just go with somebody else's answer. But no, my answer was what I stuck with. I think I literally thought that the answer was D. And it was. After I answered, he was like, I never liked that question. So I was like, you definitely, like he's gone through this test multiple times because he holds this class on a weekly basis. He knows the answers by heart. I feel like it's like some mind game that he was playing with me because he knew that he didn't like that question and because he didn't like the fact that I wasn't participating like everybody else, he saved that question for me. He's playing this mind game and I'm like, dude, I don't fuck with it. (laughs) Am I like over exaggerating? But I, again, it's the vibe. I analyze things to that extent. And I don't have to deal with people who do that to me, luckily. But when I do, I, I sense what's going on. But yeah, he definitely saved that question that he didn't like for me just because I was that guy. And it rubbed him the wrong way. Like, whoops. I don't know. There was just a few things that I thought were really ridiculous. And he's a complainer, too. I mean, like, it sounds like I'm complaining right now as well, but I feel like it's coming from a place where I'm just like, I don't understand why he acts this way for no reason. Like, it's not that serious. Yeah, there was just complaints that I heard out of this guy. I'm just like, dude, why do you have to share this? It's not really relevant. It is absolutely not relevant to what we're talking in class at all. One, he was complaining about the kids in his neighborhood. For example... He told us about Halloween day. It was around three o'clock in the afternoon and he has a ring camera set up at the front of his house. So when these kids in the neighborhood showed up to his door, they knocked or they rung the doorbell and he got a notification on his phone because he wasn't home at the time. He was telling the class that he saw these kids on his phone and he was like, what the hell are they doing there? And was just so annoyed that these kids were at his door. But I'm just like, it sounds kind of ridiculous because you're annoyed of people just simply knocking on your door and you're assuming that they're up to no good. He could have just been indifferent about the situation. They're not damaging his property. What are they doing wrong? You only see from your phone that they showed up at your door, rung the doorbell, and that's it. But then his tone of voice was just so annoyed at the fact that they were there. I feel like he jumped to the conclusion that they're there for no good. Also the same day, there were like a couple other kids that came to his door when he was home. It was probably like five o'clock in the afternoon. So they knocked on his door. He opened the door and they were like, trick or treat. He was like, I don't have any candy for you. And then they left. So he continued to tell the class, like, what the hell are they doing, pretty much. It was 5 o'clock in the afternoon, and it's not even dark yet. And, like, they have no common sense. Why would I be passing out candy when it's not even dark yet? They should know better. I'm like, dude, isn't that serious? There are just some kids, and they're excited that it's Halloween. I mean, for me, I would just give them candy. Like, how often does it happen where people are trick-or-treating before it gets dark? I feel like it's so little. I really would not want this guy as a neighbor. (laughs) If I knew that he was like that, I would definitely avoid his house. And on top of that, he talks about his girlfriend a lot, which is cool. Good for you. (laughs) But he mimics her. It's probably because I say the word like, but he was seeing how she says the word like after every other word that comes out of her mouth. And then he continues to mock her 
Again, is it that serious? We just say like. You're still getting the message across, like what the hell, dude? You have a stick up your butt, it seems like. <laughs> and I hope that it gets better. I hope that it gets lubricated and removed. <laughs> and that's all I have to say about this guy. Again, good thing I don't have to deal with people like this often. But gosh, I would have a really hard time going to sleep at night if I were like that. <laughs> all right, it's getting dark. That was a very random podcast episode, but at the same time, we had a lot of interesting topics, right? Not understanding why people don't throw away their dog poop. Complainers who love to complain. Oh my gosh, my throat's dry. Pizza, Elon Musk, barbecue, and tacos. I'm excited to go camping this weekend. It's going to be next to the ocean, so... There's going to be a lot of good food. Each person's bringing their own dish and I'm bringing tacos. Hopefully it doesn't rain, that's all. But even if it does, I've dealt with it before. Camping is just a really fun experience. We're going to turn up in the woods, play some really good music, and vibe. It's going to be lit. If you made it this far, I mess with you heavy. Thank you for tuning in. I know I look kind of crazy, but if you're here for the crazy... If you're here for me looking like a third blind mice, the fourth blind mice, let me know. There's more where this came from. I would really appreciate it if you give me a like, leave a comment on anything that I talked about. If you have a complainer in your life, tell me about them. I'm curious. <laughs> like, subscribe, leave a comment. If you're listening to this on a podcast platform, give your girl five stars. That would be freaking awesome. It would probably be the dopest thing in the world to me. It will probably be like the best gift that I could receive from a stranger. Honestly. But yeah. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a great rest of your day. Week. And if not, it's okay. Because it happens. Life happens. Bye.